Hey there, and in today's lesson, we're going to be going over PHP pagination. Now, the reason why you would have this on your website is because if you have loads and loads of results, so hundreds and hundreds of results, you don't want to print that all out on the page. One, that would take a long time to load, depending on what the results are. And two, who wants to scroll down the page hundreds of results? So what I've done is I've created a little script which has got no designs. But what it does is it just quickly runs through the help and develop users with a next button and a previous button and you can just run through them and it shows the first name of the users now today's lesson is going to be going over the basic of a php pagination so it's going to go over the main functionalities but in the next lesson after this we're going to be going over the option for the users to then change what you want to order by currently i'm going to be ordering by the user id um, which is the ID of their row in my database table. But in the next lesson, we're going to be going over how you can change that to order by alphabetical order, order by sign up date, whatever you want. We're going to be going over it. Okay, so let's get started. If I open up my code editor, you can use Notepad++, Sublime Text 2, or Dreamweaver, but I'm going to be using Coder 2. You can see that we've just got this blank PHP or not even a PHP really, it's a HTML document, but it's saved as index.php. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this again and I'm going to upload it to my server. Now once that's been uploaded, we can see if we refresh this, we just start with your pagination. So we're starting completely from fresh. All right. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have a connect script. Now I'm not going to be going over this in this tutorial. It'll probably be a text tutorial um, somewhere along the site sometime in the future. And that's just going to be going over the basics of connecting to a database. Now you can connect to a database using a PDO connection or a MySQLi. But in today's lesson, I'm keeping it simple and connecting it through a MySQL database. So I'm just going to include that now. So I'm going to include once and then connect.php, which is what I called it. So once we have that, um, the next thing I'm going to do is we need to count how many like rows are in my database because, well, we're going to have to know how many rows there are to work out how many pages there will be. Okay, so how we're going to do that is we're going to create a variable and we're just going to call it count underscore query. Now, it's, this is going to do exactly what it says, and it's going to count the query which we're sending. So it's going to be equal to a MySQL underscore query. Open and close brackets and close off with a semicolon. Now what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to put two double quotation marks, and I'm just going to put select null. Because I'm not actually going to be getting any data back from the database, I can just select nothing, so it doesn't actually slow down at all. And I'm just going to do from my database, which yours can be anything, but I'm using users and we're just going to select them all so that's all we need to do now to count this what we need to do is we're just going to create a new variable named count and it's going to be equal to mysql underscore num underscore rows and then within the brackets we put in the query which we want to count so that's called count query and close it off now count is going to be equal to the amount of rows which we have in my database so if I just echo out the count variable down here, and then let's publish this. And once it's published, we can go to the site and refresh, and you can see that 151 is currently in my database. So we don't want to be displaying all of that on the page, do we? So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the functionalities of the pagination. So I'm just going to comment out saying pagination starts here. Now how we're going to collect the information via what page the user is on is via a git variable. Now the git variable is in the URL of the website. So how we're going to get that is we just do if is set and then open and close brackets. And then we dollar symbol underscore git and then the name of the variable. And we're just going to call it page, as that makes sense. And then we're going to open curly brace and go down a few lines and close the curly brace. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to make the page equal to the get page. 
like so. Then once we have that, people can kind of work their way around it. There's no validation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that only numbers are being placed into that page variable. So how we do this is we're just going to replace everything that isn't a number with nothing. So we type in preg underscore replace, and then we open the bracket and we close the bracket around just before the semicolon and after the square bracket. And then we put in two double quotation marks, comma, two double quotation marks, comma. Now the last um, item which we're feeding through to this function is going to be the item which we want to filter. The second one is what we want to replace with, so we're leaving that blank. And then in this first one, what we're going to do is we're going to type in two pound symbols. So we just put them in. And then within here, you put in two square brackets, and then you do the up arrow, which is above the six on your keyboard, and you do zero through to nine. And now that will only allow numbers, and whichever isn't a number, we're going to replace with nothing within this variable. So I hope that makes sense for you. And now what we're going to do is if the get variable of page is not set, then we're going to do else. And we're just going to set that variable to equal to the default page, which we want to show first, which is one. Okay, so now we've got that. Um, basically, that's going to tell us what page we're on. Now what we need to do is we need to define a variable which um, chooses how many items we can show per page. So we just type in per page equals the amount you want to show. You can change this however you want. So I'm just going to choose 10. So I'm showing 10 per page. And you can obviously see in the future how you could ch then change that so the user could pick how many they want to show per page. So if they wanted to show 100 per page, they could. But it's their choice. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get the value of the last page in the pagination. Now, this is a little bit of maths. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a variable called last page. Now, what this is going to be equal to is seal like this. And this function just um, rounds a number. So if it's like a point number, then it will round it to the closest number. What we're going to do is we're going to use the count, which is the total amount of rows in our database divided by the per page variable. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because obviously we want a certain amount of numbers per page, and that just finds that out for us. Okay, so once we got the last page, we can then tell that we start at number one, we finish at a certain page, and we've got a certain amount of pages, and we've got a certain amount of items per page. So we've got a basic fundamental setup of the pagination, which is good. We're getting started. All right. So once we've got that, what we need to do is we need to, then we need to be sure that the URL variable of the page number is not lower than one and no higher than the last page. Now, how we're going to do this is you just simply do if page is greater than the last number or lower than one that start with. So less than one. And we're just going to make the page equal to one. So if people will think they're funny, they're going to be page equals zero. Huh? Well, we're going to change that to one. And then we're going to do else if page is greater than the last page. So if you have like 10 pages on your site and someone puts in 100, it's just going to make the page equal to the last page. So there's no way people can get around that either. Okay, so once that's been checked, we can then have to create the limit per page. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a variable named limit, like so, and it's going to be equal to nothing whilst I explain it. Now, how a limit would work on a query is you type in limit, and then you'd say the number which you want to limit from. So let's just say we want to limit from 70, and then you'd put in how many items after that you'd want to limit by. So how we're going to work this out is what we're going to do is we're just going to put a space and then a space after the double quotation mark and put a period to concatenate onto like a bit of PHP. Um, the maths which we're going to use to this is we open and close brackets and we're going to use page minus one and then after we've done that we're going to times that by per page. Now, the reason why we're doing this is if you can imagine we're starting at number one, we want to minus that so it starts at zero, times it by 10, which is zero. So we're starting at zero, 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to concatenate back into the query. So we just put in a period and another double quotation mark. And then we just put a comma. So we then want to say how much we're limiting by. And we just put in the variable of our page or per page variable. And we close that off like so. Now that's our limit variable set. So we don't need to do anything else. Don't need to worry about anything else. The pages will automatically be limited after that. That was the hard part, believe it or not. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a query, which then queries the database of the items we want with the limit. So we're going to create a variable named query, and it's going to be equal to the MySQL underscore query, just like we used above, like so. Now, this is going to be select and you can do select all or select anything, but I'm just going to be selecting first name. And from users, now this is where you go order by. Now you don't have to order by, but I'm going to order by the user underscore ID. And that's just a row in my table, which is a auto incrementing ID for each user. And I'm just going to do descending, so it's the newest users first, and then just put in the limit variable. So we have that limit variable at the end. So we're selecting the first name from my users table, ordering by the user ID from the newest first, and we're just putting in that limit variable which we created here. Now what we can do is we can just create a little check so that we can do if the last page is not equal to one. So let's say if the last page does not equal one that means that if there is more than one page then what we can do is we can just within here we can do if the page does not equal last page so that means that if the current page you're on is not the last page that means that we can go next to page because there will be more pages so we're just going to create a variable called next and it's going to equal to page plus one. And that's going to be the next page because we're plusing one. So then what we do is we just type in page in nation and we're going to do period equals, which means that every, um, every sort of like, uh, other page nation variable will be concatenated onto the current string so that it won't replace each other. Then within the, um, single quotation marks, we're just going to do an A href and it's going to be equal to the current page, so index.php question mark saying that we're defining a git variable and it's going to be equal to page equals and then we're going to just quickly do single quotation mark period period single quotation mark to concatenate on a PHP variable of the page or the next page, so we type in next. And then after this, we're just going to close off that href and just type in next, like so. Now, we're just going to copy and paste this if condition. And then what we can do to change it to make sure that the last page, we're going to do um, to make sure that it isn't the first page. And what we're going to do is we're going to do if page does not equal one. So if it's not the first page, then what we're going to do is we're going to allow people to click previous. So we're going to change this variable to prev just for it to make sense. And instead of page plus one, we're going to do page minus one. Now it's going to be exactly the same apart from changing this to prev, and then we can change this text to previous, like so. So now we have the pagination set out. What we can do is now we can run a while loop to display all of our members. So we're going to run a while loop, and the row is going to equal to the MySQL underscore fetch underscore array which then just collects everything in array and then we just link it to the query variable which we created once we have that i'm going to open curly brace and close the curly brace and i'm just going to create an output and it's going to be a concatenating equals again and it's just going to equal to the row first name and then we're just going to plus on a string and I'm just going to put a HR just so that it drops down a line and I know HRs are really old but you know so now what I'm going to do is in my HTML where I echoed out the count I'm just going to echo out the output and then I'm just going to copy and paste that and then anywhere on the page I can echo out the pagination 
which is perfect because you might want it in more places on the page. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to publish this to the internet and my server, and I'm just going to refresh. And you can see that we've got a MySQL error. So let's just check this on line 40. And row equals MySQL underscore fetch area, the query. So you can see that I've misspelled select. So if we just put an E in there and spell it correctly, then we can publish that and refresh. And there we go. We have all of my users and we click next. Previous button shows and we click next. Previous, previous, and there you go. We've got a working pagination. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you, goodbye.